Hello Year 5 and welcome to your 6th Geography lesson. Today we're going to be looking at how is land used around a river. For your do now, I want you to order, order the maps from last lesson. So, one of these maps is the upper course, one is the middle course and one is the lower course. I want you to write them in the correct order. So they are numbered 1, 2 and 3. You need to put the upper course first, then the middle course and then the lower course. Right, for this lesson we are going to be focusing on grid squares and learning how to use them. We're going to be locating different places on the map. It would be ideal if you've got this booklet in front of you, either on Seesaw or if you've got the paper copy. So you can access, uh, you have access to the maps. First, our task is to find the village of Kemble in the southwest corner of the map. Now the village is located in grid square 9897. This is very important, we need to remember where it is located. Now I'm going to show you how to use this. So you need to look around the bottom and you need to look for number 98. Point at it and shout yes once you found it. Well done. Now can you see that right square after the number 98 is the square showing 98. Now we need to go up on this uh, on the right, the numbers you can see on the left, sorry. You need to find the number 97 because that is the next number we're looking for. You can see 97 is the first number there. The grid on top of that, the little uh, square box on top of 97 represents 97. So we've got 98, we need to go up two to get to the 97 box. And you can see Kemble in the southwest corner there. I will show you on the next slide. There it is. So we went from 98, 97. Now, for this activity, we need to find the Thames Head, the source of the River Thames, located in Grid Square 98-99. That is, that is the north of Kemble. So again, the 98, you need to find that along the bottom line. We've already looked at that, so there's 98, we know where that square is. Now we need to find 99 on this line, the y-axis. So if you go to 99, you can see it there. So I'll show you on the next slide. Here. So we've got 98 and 99. Now you're going to have a go at doing this independently. I want you to find the square, um, the grid 9898. Right, can you spot where the River Thames first became visible? So look for where the blue line is in that little box. What is the figure grid reference for the visible source of the river? So where it starts. Now I want you to follow the course of the River Thames. In what direction is it flowing? Would it be uphill or would it be downhill? And I want you to, for your final activity, write down the grid, grid reference for the point at which the river leaves the map. So the last part that is on the map. Please write your answers to these questions in your book. So what is the... Uh, grid reference for where the visible source of the river is, in what direction does it flow, is it uphill or downhill, and what is the grid reference for when it leaves the map. So those are the three questions you've got you need to answer for in your book. Now we've had a little bit of practice at locating different places, you're going to have a goal at locating your own place and planning a journey using this map. For your independent application, you are going to be planning your own journey using the map, using grid references. You are going to start from the grid reference 9900. From there, you need to return to the village of Kemble. You're going to use the key to explain how you might do this walk. You can decide where you might go on the way. So you may decide you want to buy a refreshing drink. So this would be in 9897 because there's a public house there. If there are any other symbols and features that you can see marked at Kemble, you can use these as part of your grid reference to visit different places along your journey. For example, you may want to go to a railway station or a post office in order to reach Kemble. There's an extra sheet of paper here in case you would like to write your work straight onto Seesaw. 
but I would advise doing this on paper and taking a picture of it so it's nice and clear.